and welcome back to The Couch. My name's Rosie Jenner and today we're going to be talking about Halloween, Halloween, <laughs> Halloween book recommendations. Um, obviously it's spooky season where I am. Um, we're currently just entering fall or autumn here in the UK um, and I thought it would be great to talk about some of my favourite um sort of spooky reads so this isn't necessarily going to be um cozy vibes or anything um i mentioned last episode that i really enjoy horror books so the majority of these are going to be those um most of these books i've read in the past two years so i have a good idea of what they are like you know did i enjoy them um and hopefully i won't have forgotten everything about them so without further ado um what we're going to do is I will um, talk about the more adult books and then I'll go into um, some more sort of new adult, young adult, teen books and then we'll talk about some um, children's horror. <laughs> that kind of sounds like a paradox but we'll work it out. Um, so obviously first I have to start out with one of my favourite um horror books I think it's you know it's one of those ones where everyone's either read it or they're not sure if they should read it because there are so many trigger warnings um and that is The Troop by Nick Cutter um Nick Cutter is one of my favorite horror authors of all time and he particularly delves into body horror um so if you are squeamish if you are you know scared by um gore don't read this um i'd also put a strong trigger warning for sort of mutual abuse um animal abuse obviously body body horror um and just yeah be um mindful of how aware of the horror genre you are when reading this um (laughs) but basically um it's sort of lord of the flies these boys go onto an island and become trapped because a strange man turns up on this island that they're in a scout group um trekking around on with their leader and guy turns up with an all-consuming parasite um an absolute disgusting chaos ensues from there with excerpts from the quote-unquote um scientific discoveries surrounding this parasite I think this is really good for sort of seasoned horror readers or people who want to get into body horror um, who might already have some good experience with the genre but want to go a bit deeper um, because it's I I don't know I didn't find it too bad Um, I gave it a four out of five stars in the end it is one of my favorite horror books but um, I think you'll probably find with the ending and some of it sort of felt a bit like oh was that really needed um some of the animal scenes are they really needed um but yeah go and tread lightly with that one (laughs) um so the next one i'll talk about has become very popular i've seen it on a lot of shelves in waterstones which is quite surprising because um, you wouldn't think that this would be such a sort of mainstream book, and that is Tender as the Flesh by Augustina Bustarica. I want to say that's her name. Um, this is a book where basically <sighs> cannibalism has become rampant because there's been sort of a wipeout virus of all the normal. Um, meat that people can eat um so people um who are primarily you know um disabled in order to become livestock are eaten in this book um i think that the plot twist was certainly something that i didn't see coming and i think that it is brilliantly written um a lot of it is brazenly normal (laughs) like you sort of think like how are you talking in such a way that's as if this is every day and i think that's where the shock value of this book comes in for me this wasn't the most shocking or scary book i've ever read but it was and 
don't want to say an enjoyable read. Um, it was still an enthralling, interesting read. Um, and if you're interested in cannibalism as one of your horror um, quota, then this is the book for you. Um, I didn't give it five stars because I do think that maybe in terms of the horror and gore aspects it could have gone into a little bit more detail um, and it kind of felt a little bit predictable to me but it still felt like a really sound enjoyable short read that I read in one go um, and I know that so many people adore this book I think it's really good if you're starting off in the horror genre especially in sort of dystopia questioning people um, and the future of our world um, I think I took a star off because um, I was like where is the corn <laughs> where are the meat alternatives where are the soybeans um, but all to be found out and maybe you'll pick up something that I didn't um, so the next one I'll talk about is The Lost Village by Camilla Stern um, this is your classic sort of haunted deserted town where someone's connected it's kind of Blair Witch Project they're very interested they want to go find out what's happening um, I think this is brilliantly atmospheric I wouldn't say it's completely horrific but it does sort of keep you on the edge of your seat um, some of the parts I was sort of like oh like did that come out of nowhere was there a build up there was that predictable um, but in general I think the whole vibe of it is very you know we're in a misty haunted location where we don't know what's been going on and we're going to find out why these people are interested in it um and it's it's just brilliant um the visuals i got it got from it were probably way more exaggerated than the text made it but i really enjoyed it um so a, another one for the adult section is the ruins by scott smith again this is sort of along the lines of the troop it's very body horror um it's very bio horror so we're looking at invasive plant species in this one um you might have watched the horrendous film adaptation of it um you might have loved the film uh, and you might have already read this book but i personally adored this book i think it's horrific and interesting and I love sort of the mystic element of the natives trying to communicate that they're idiots for you know being these white saviour sort of people who are just going on holiday and they're like let's go look at some ruins and they sort of get their comeuppance for trampling on native land almost um that's not what it's about but I sort of interpreted it like that um they basically climb up this hill and get stuck because of um well treacherous plants really um and it's it's great <laughs> it's everything you want from bio horror i think um so quickly moving on i will give a shout out to my best friend's exorcism because i absolutely love this book um, it's sort of a fun sort of 80s vibe play on the exorcist only it's your best friend has been possessed um, I just want to give it a sh quick shout out because I know that a lot of people love Grady Hendrix and probably already have this on their list but this is a favourable mention for me um, I won't go into too much detail about it because I'll probably make a sort of top 10 horror reads slash authors bo uh, book list but that's the honourable mention um, and I will also make an honourable mention to My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. Um, I think Stephen Graham Jones is an amazing author. He's um, a Native American man who's um, brilliant at writing. I know that My Heart is a Chainsaw isn't everyone's favourite, but I think it definitely grows on you. And once you've left the book behind, you just can't stop thinking about it. Um, but again, Stephen Graham Jones is very well known, so I will... Um, sort of cut that one a little bit short because it doesn't really slot into the classics that I would read around Halloween. Um, so next I'll talk about The Nightmare Room by Chris Sorensen who I have never heard of before. I'm sure that probably everyone else in the horror community has um, but The Nightmare Room is absolutely brilliant. Um, 
and it's basically about this man who was traumatized in his family home and is now seeing sort of dark figures in his bedroom um and being almost pulled back in time um if i'm remembering it correctly and it's just phenomenal i won't say much more about it because i think that it's he's an author that you need to read for yourself and discover because i've not seen anyone mention this book and i really really want you to go and read it i gave it five stars i think it's one of the most glaringly beautiful scary atmospheric books that i have read in the horror genre for a very long time um so please go and read that and if chris Sorensen ever happens to stumble across my podcast hi please write to me i love your books <laughs> oh and to go back on my heart is a chainsaw i forgot to mention that it's a book about um a girl who's obsessed with horror movies and she fancies herself a nice final girl or feels as though there is going to be a string of events that happen to make a final girl in her new town where um, a new person's just joined the school and she's all about um you know very vintage to more sort of 80s 90s horror references um so that's that's a nice throwback um which i think is probably one of the most sellable things about it actually um i know again things have gotten worse since we last spoke by eric laroca is very popular now so instead of telling you about the horrible 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 disgusting body horror makes me want to throw up book that he wrote which i love um i will say what have you done today to deserve your eyes and i'll also say go check out his other works because they are all brilliant um but i'll let you discover them for yourself because his should come with a really 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 big trigger warning (laughs) um the rest that i've mentioned i feel like tender is the flesh um has some sort of maybe sexual con sexual sexual content warnings um and obviously it's more about humans being used but the rest mostly you know body horror possession abuse those sorts of themes that you see in horror a lot um this thing between us was very popular a little while back for a few months and i haven't seen it spoke about since so um that's by gus moreno and i think it's brilliant it's basically about this guy who's um in a relationship and he's in this seemingly haunted apartment and thinks that his sort of um alexa style robot is haunting them um and it leads to just a whole load of horrendous events in his life um it's terrifying um it's very surreal it's very dreamscape magic realism um it talks about loss of spouse lots um loss and sort of pet cemetery vibes around a pet um so do tread a little bit lightly with some of the themes in there but i think it's quite accessible and it is very enjoyable um i listened to it on a car journey and i thought it was great um so going into some sort of ya um recommendations just quickly for you guys um so obviously last episode i talked about society for soulless girls i wouldn't say that this has too many sort of body horror elements there are some i wouldn't say that it's you know horrific um but there are definitely themes in there that feel very horror-esque and um obviously you can find my full review in the um podcast archives um and yeah go check that out i won't say anything more but um lauren stephen is a master wordsmith and i absolutely loved that book um Going on to sort of a well-known one is Wild Girls by Rory Power. This is more of a YA take, again, on sort of Lord of the Flies-esque um, happenings where these girls get stuck into a school, um, a boarding school, and are sort of haunted by, um, almost by a terror. It's sort of a YA version of the troop, but... Um, gorgeously sapphic (laughs) um and a little bit different 
so um i would definitely recommend that one it sort of almost has um gone series by um oh my goodness what's his name literally one of my favorite series when i was growing up and i've gone it well anyway if you enjoyed the gone series as a teenager or a child um it sort of has that sort of you know we're all stuck together there's horrible things outside we need to sort of ration and see what happens um and maybe we'll gain some superpowers and it's great um <laughs> there has been some controversy around Rory powers from what i've heard of i haven't really looked into it that deeply um but you know maybe if you don't really want to support problematic authors um do have a look into sort of what happened um because i think there was sort of some things that happened after i read it that were not sort of favorable to um pop authors but i'm not entirely sure and i think a lot of it was misbusted but um i'm sure we'll do in a whole episode about problematic authors and you know should we access what they've written etc etc um so the next one i will offer you um is horrid by Catherine leno or Catherine leto i can't remember her name but it's um if you've ever heard that nursery rhyme which is like um there was a little girly who had what is it? A curly whirly lock of golden hair in the middle of her head. It's sort of around that nursery rhyme. And it is. It's horrifying, but in a very quiet way. Um, it's basically. It sort of feels like a haunted twin sort of situation. Um, you know, a spirit attached to a house that's absolutely terrorizing this girl, um, but we're not sure you know, if it is a spirit sort of thing. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so going to sort of middle grade, um, I would definitely recommend Ghost Squad and Witchlings. I'm sure when the second Witchlings comes out, I will do a whole, whole, whole episode about Clarabella Ortega because I'm obsessed with her. Um, I think she's a wonderful writer. She's um, a Latinx writer who's very inclusive um you know she has very um wide spectrum um of representation in all of her books and i would definitely say that sort of seven year olds onwards could read them um but they are quite long and wordy so maybe more towards the 12 year old end um but yes i'm obsessed with these books you can definitely find them all over my social media um which is the zodiac reader underscore on instagram and twitter um and yeah just joyous the ghost squad um is a group of kids sort of exploring um oh my gosh it's been so so long since i read this exploring sort of um supernatural ghosts how to sort of guide people into their afterlife and witchlings is a very fun school-based magical girl um we are the outcasts but we're going to change everything sort of book um which is just brilliant and i would recommend it to everyone um then i would recommend watch hollow this is definitely more of a vibey one by gregory i want to say gregory Fenero, but i might be saying that wrong <clears throat> excuse me um watch hollow is more about the spooky vibes but there is sort of a monster chase hunt mythical vibes very um magical but in a very gothic way um and very enjoyable so these two children turn up at their new house which lo and behold turns out to be full of secrets and hauntings and magical uh, figurines and it's just spectacular i'd recommend probably sort of 8 to 13 maybe um there are some sort of darker aspects of it i suppose like um you know dark characters but um i definitely say it's sort of accessible for everyone but it does have that very very creepy atmosphere 
Um, and the last one I want to say for more of the vibes, which I said I wouldn't do, but I absolutely love this book and, well, this series. And I think that everyone should read it, especially after all of these hideously horrible books in the best way. Um, and that is the Low Sugar Magic series by Anna Mariano. And these are basically about a family of brujas who run a beautiful um, shop that has all their family recipes in that you know cure and hex and curse um and help everyone in the village and she's sort of trying to um advance her magic and get in on you know what's going on in the bakery maybe stealing some sweet treats to do some um tricks and treats and i just really really enjoy the vibe of these books and i genuinely think that anyone could read them um they are quite you know wordy and longer for younger readers so maybe sort of eight or nine onwards um but i would definitely recommend them for everyone i think they're the most spectacular magical time um i think that that sort of pairs with ghost squad and witchlings they're just a good vibe they're just fun to read and i think that we all need that in our lives um so that's my well i want to say short list but actually it's a fairly long list of um some of my favorite seasonal reads um this year i'm going to aim to read um the exorcist and rosemary's baby but i'm still doing vigorous training so we will see if i get there um but yeah i'm hoping to do some sort of different vibey podcast i was going to review wreck but i feel like maybe two long reviews in a row might get a little bit tenuous for some people um so we'll just see how it goes um so yeah i hope you're enjoying the spooky season already and wearing your hats and scarves and gloves and sweaters or dressing appropriately if it's way too hot where you are um and that you're enjoying hot chocolate, tea, coffee, pumpkin spice, whatever the hell you're in the mood for, um, and just indulging in the beautiful orange surrealness of autumn. And with that, I shall remind you that my uh, socials, you can find me at the Zodiac Reader underscore on Twitter and Instagram, or you can find my uh, personal page at Rosie Jenner underscore. And with that, I will see you again as soon as possible. Bye!